Do you know AWS MSK, the managed access for streaming Apache Kafka, comes with three authentication methods, one of which is IAM auth, which means that in order to access this Kafka cluster, you need to be assigned as an AWS IAM user or having an IAM role with necessary permissions. In this video, we are going to look at how to access MSK Kafka cluster that requires AWS IAM users to authenticate. The video outline includes creating IAM auth enabled Kafka cluster in AWS, creating IAM permissions and users to grant read write access to the Kafka cluster. And then finally, we are going to test this Kafka cluster via EC2 instance using the Kafka CLI scripts. As a bonus, I will also be providing you the Docker file as well as some Terraform code for this exercise. So let's get started. Just to be clear, this is not a video for beginners. I'm expecting you already know about how to set up IAM users, roles, permissions, how to set up MSK cluster, creating and accessing EC2 instances. If not, that is out of the scope of this video. So I would recommend to watch and learn such stuff from either YouTube or AWS resources. So to get us kick started and save us some time, I have already done some prerequisite setups for you. So this is how our Kafka cluster is going to look like. As you can see, the TLS encryption is enabled and I have also enabled IAM role-based authentication and rest of the configuration stays as basic. So I'm gonna click hit create cluster. So this is going to take uh, around 15 to 20 minutes to set up the cluster. So the cluster is up and running with named demo Kafka cluster, which is uh, IAM auth enabled. And I have also created IAM permissions and uh, roles and users for us. I have created two policies. One is the read only and one is the read and write. The read and write policy looks something like this. So we'll have access to uh, all actions in Kafka cluster on this Kafka cluster itself with uh, on all topics and all groups and all the transaction ID. So this policy has like kind of a full access which can be granted to some admin users. Whereas the read only policy looks something like this. It has permissions to Kafka cluster following actions. We'll just be giving access to the group named as reader dash group. And we are just giving the access to read data from this specific topic, test dash topic. I have created IAM user for both of these policies. I have also created the secret credentials for both of these users and I have stored them locally. Now it's time to access the Kafka cluster. Uh, so the way how I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a, a pod from my Kubernetes cluster, but this is going to be the exactly same as if I'm doing it from EC2 instance. So this is just a minimal YAML definition for my pod that I'm going to spin up in my Kubernetes cluster. So this uses Python 3.8 slim image and the command and args that I'm going to run is a simple while loop that continues forever echoing hello, just to keep this pod busy while we access this through SSH. Again, this is an optional approach. You do not have to spin up a pod in Kubernetes cluster because most of you, you won't have any Kubernetes cluster set it up in your AWS environment. So instead what you would do is spin up an EC2 instance and access Kafka cluster from there. So in my case, I'm going to follow this approach. So to spin up the cluster, I would say kubectl create and pod, um, this one will be named as Kafka test sub, whereas I'm going to spin up another one as pub. So this will be the publisher one. Right, so let us access our Kubernetes cluster. I am in my namespace anum dev. And as you can see, we have two pods running, uh, test pub and test sub. So in the left hand side, we're gonna access the pub and on the right hand side, we will access the sub, I mean the subscriber one. So we are inside the pod and from here onwards, the steps would be exactly the same as if you are inside your EC2 instance. So follow along. First thing first, we are going to do the update. Next, upgrade. Next, we are going to install some important bits, uh, for example, nano, vim, tar, wget, and the most important one, the Java itself, because Kafka requires Java. This is going to take a while to finish. Right, so Java is installed on both of our machines. So let's type in Java and say version. All right, so next step is to install Kafka. For that, we are going to run this command. I'm going to mention all of these commands in the description below. 
So we untar these. And then finally we can remove the downloaded file just to clean up. Next we are going to download the jar file that AWS provides to access the IAM auth Kafka cluster. Now the jar file has been downloaded. Next we are going to move this jar file inside our Kafka directory uh, under libs. Oops. Right, so the last bit that we need to do is add some configurations in the Kafka client properties. So for that we say nano Kafka and here we are going to create this file called client.properties and we do the similar process here. Here we are going to mention these following four lines. So this is telling Kafka to use AWS MSK IAM method for authentication. So we save this and exit. So at this time we are all set it up to do the testing. But before that, we have to make sure that we are using the correct IAM user with correct permissions. So remember the credentials that we created for read write and read only user, uh, which I saved it locally, which now I'm going to export them over here as an environment variables. So AWS success uh, key ID and AWS secret access key. So these are the credentials I copy pasted from the user credentials from the dashboard from here, this. Uh, so this was our read only user on the right and on the left is our read and write user. So for this, I'm going to export the read write user credentials. All right, all good. Now, first thing that we need to do is create the topics. So we are going to do that from the pub user, the, the user that has read write access, the admin user. So we go to Kafka bin, then there is this script called Kafka topics.sh then we use the command create and then here we need to provide the address of the Kafka broker which we can get it from here view client information as you can see this Kafka has only uh, 9098 port address which refers to the IAM auth port so we copy this and paste this over here and then we set the replication factor as two, partition one, and the name of the topic itself. So in this case, test topic. Now let's see what happens. As you can see, we are caught up with an exception, Java heap space. So this is going to happen, especially in your IAM auth enabled Kafka cluster. And that is because when running these Kafka CLI commands, you have to provide the client properties file that we created earlier. So for this Kafka topic script, we have to mention this option command config and refer to the client properties that we created earlier. So this time it is going to create the topic for us. As you can see, we have already created a topic. So it says topic test topic already exists, but in your case, it will create a new one for you. Uh, we are going to create another topic, uh, test topic two. Nice. So this is already created as well. All good. Now we are going to spin up a Kafka producer on the left hand side machine. For that, we are going to run the Kafka console producer script. Again, we have to provide the bootstrap uh, brokers. So I copy this from here. And finally, we mentioned the name of the topic where we need to publish the messages. As you can see, we are again getting the errors and that is because we again missed to add the client properties config file with the Kafka console producer script. So for that, we have to mention following option with the script producer config and then Kafka client properties. Oh, looks like we messed up something. Uh, I think I did mention it wrong somehow. Sorry, it's producer dot config. All right, nice. Our, our producer is all set up to produce the messages on this topic. Now let us set up the consumer. So we go to our Kafka bin Kafka console.
consumer and then we copy paste the uh, bootstrap uh, server our, our option then we are going to mention oops sorry i pasted in the wrong section sorry this is the producer okay anyways i i just produced this following trash in this topic never mind uh, so basically this needs to be pasted here so this should be actually two dashes over here so topic test topic and then we mention the command consumer config in this case with the client properties file now let us try consumer starting from this as you can see we still get an error in this case it says not authorized to access group console consumer right exactly this is going to happen because if you do not provide the specific group name then the console consumer automatically assigns a group for you but in our case we have only provided permissions to this user to have access to this specific group named reader dash group so that's why we have to provide this specific group while uh, starting the consumer all right it looks like it has started the consumer now let us send something from producer and see if we can receive it. Hello. Nice. So that is all for this video and I hope it was informative for you guys and if it was please don't forget to give a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any questions I will try my best to reply them and as always if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe this is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. So I will see you in the next video till then take care bye.